I can still say, no matter how bad the WWE product is today, and believe me, it is all of that and a whole lot more, is that I still feel fortunate to have been a WWE and wrestling fan over the past three decades. Because I have been very fortunate to see some really good, compelling wrestling. I really, really have. I mean, I grew up at a time in the 80s where the WWF was about Hogan and Andre and Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior, Roddy Roddy Piper, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, the Million Dollar Man, Jake the Snake Roberts, the Junkyard Dog, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Mr. Perfect, the Honky Tonk Man, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, tag teams like the Hart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, Demolition, the Rockers. I mean, cartoon characters come to life. These guys were fucking awesome to me. And then as we evolve and head into the Monday Night Wars period, the Attitude Era for the WWF, now you've got a whole new generation of stars and some badass dudes. You've got Stone Cold Steve Austin, Mr. McMahon, The Rock, Undertaker, Mankind, Kane, Triple H, Kurt Angle, Ken Shamrock, Chris Jericho, Goldust, The Godfather, Val Venus, Crash Holly, Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, and a whole cast of others. I don't even have time to mention them all. So many of these characters in their own freaking way were freaking awesome. The tag teams of the time, like the Dudley Boys and Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys, the APA. Do I need to go on? We already know so many of us still live in the past. Isn't that right, PS Power? Well, you ain't the only one. There's a good reason you live in the past, because you most certainly wouldn't want to live in the freaking present. Look at those characters. Look at those talents. Look at those compelling performers. And you see where wrestling has been and what it can be. And then you see what it is today. And it makes you absolutely sick to your stomach. And it should. Look at some of the biggest names, the most popular guys in WWE today. John Cena. This dude's been doing the same shit for 11 fucking years. Down to his damn entrance music. It's the same shit for 11 years. No evolution of character. No change in direction. And no real reason to ever get behind him. Because at the end of the day, hashtag LOL Cena wins. And while the WWE views him as the definition of dependability... I view him as the personification of predictability and the epitome of so much of what is wrong with today's WWE. John Cena is your biggest star compared to Hogan, Andre, Warrior, Savage. Compared to Austin, The Rock, Mr. McMahon, Undertaker, Mankind, Triple H, Kurt Angle. This is the best. John Cena is the best. Are you fucking kidding me? And you look at somebody like Randy Orton, speaking of guys that have been pounded and forced and forced and pounded down your throats and up your asses over the past decade plus. Look at this guy. And what do you have? Sleeve tattoos. Construction worker beard. Raging ring boner. And then once he actually makes his entrance, you've got the entrance music, his ring pose, his RKO, there ain't shit else there. Sorry, Chase, it's true. And after over a fucking decade of consistently being pounded down our throats, Randy Orton still can't be a compelling character to save his fucking life and still can't a God cut a goddamn promo to save his life. You've been doing this shit for 15 years. You've been at the top of WWE for over a decade and you still fucking suck at half of the job requirements. But this is one of the biggest stars that they've had over the past decade plus. Give me a fucking break. You've got Sheamus. Instead of being this unique and compelling personality that he could be, and being this Celtic badass that you could tie into Game of Thrones, you can tie him into any fucking thing. It doesn't matter. You can make him a legit Celtic badass. Somebody interesting and compelling. Instead, you make him the ginger dumbass. Because only the WWE could it exceed itself and its expectations of stupidity by taking this guy that in so many ways should be a huge deal and a big star and making him a dumbass. Sheamus is one of the top guys in WWE. Fucking Sheamus! So I go from Jake the Snake Roberts and the junkyard fucking dog 
in the mid-card of the 80s, to entertaining-ass characters like Gold Dust and Hell Ken Shamrock 2 and Val Venus, the Godfather, Crash Holly, to now I've got freaking Sheamus as one of the top guys in WWE. He doesn't even sniff any of their butt cheese. Take that lepre leprechaun and smoke it, bitch. And you got Roman Reigns, like the love child of Teston Diesel, with the personality to match. I mean, the fact that we're even arguing or discussing whether or not Roman Reigns is worthy of being the top guy, if he's that next standard bearer for the WWE, isn't that the point of realization where you come to Jesus and you say, oh my God, this is how bad this shit has gotten. We're arguing the merits of whether or not this guy is the future of the company. And then you've got Kevin Owens. And I'm a fan of some of his independent work over the years, yes. But why would anybody in their blue minds give two fucks about this fat ass? Who is the Kevin Owens character and why the fuck should we care? And of course the WWE still hasn't figured out a reason to make us fucking care. This is one of the guys getting the most emphasis on your brand is Kevin Owens. Be different if he shaved his head, put flame tattoos on there. Then at least I can say he's Bam Bam 2.0, but he's not even that interesting. And then we've got Dolph Ziggler, who tries to be others, and all the while doesn't know who the hell he is. After all of these years, when I ask you, what is the Dolph Ziggler character about, you say... And there's nothing there. Think about it. This is how bad it's gotten. There are still those of you that worship Dolph Ziggler and would jizz in yourself if this boring piece of shit touched the world title again. Jeff Jarrett 2.0, and I want to make one correction here, one thing clear. I almost want to apologize to that founder, the mid-card piece of crap, Jeff fucking Jarrett, because how dare I compare Dolph Ziggler to him? Dolph Ziggler sucks so bad that it should be assumed Dolph Ziggler position. I mean, he's that fucking boring. At least Jeff Jarrett could manage to fucking tell a story in a match in the ring and could at least cut a scripted promo that was designed to do whatever it was supposed to be designed to do. Dolph Ziggler can't even get that shit right. And all that flopping and overselling bullshit is just that bullshit. Because the Dolph Ziggler character is fucking bullshit. It's boring and lame. And shame on those of you that still think that this guy should be in any way, shape, or form sniffing the top of the WWE. And then you've got Bray Wyatt of all people. Who apparently hates showers, short sentences, and beating anybody that's relevant of any kind. He hates pe he beating people that matter more than he hates a damn shaver. The same thing with his damn family. And soap. And deodorant. Looks like a dirty fucking scuzzball. And not in any part of a peeling way whatsoever. I legitimately have more interest in Bray Wyatt at this point in time if he was a fucking panhandler gimmick. It's that ridiculous. So what's my whole point here? Other than just randomly bitching about the WWE. It's just the point of this is how bad it's gotten. And I know I've talked about this before, but it's worth mentioning again. This shit is terrible, and the characters are a direct reflection of how terrible it is. Frankly, today's entire wrestling business is a reflection of the current entertainment culture. This reality TV era, where there's a lack of originality, there's a lack of creativity, many people are famous, and pretty much just famous for being famous, and actually have no talent whatsoever to <laughs> see the Kardashians, as just one of many examples, mind you. A lack of originality and creativity in the music business, in particular on the hip-hop scene. So many other things. The WWE perfectly mirrors that. People that are big stars, we say are big stars, and we don't even know why they're big stars. They're just big stars because they're big stars. Because there's no reason for them to actually be big stars. It's just a default thing where somebody has to fucking be it, so there you fucking go. There's got to be somebody to talk about. A lack of originality, a lack of creativity. It is the entertainment reality of today's American society. So therefore, it's appropriate that WWE mirrors that. The problem is, is that when the WWE effectively mirrored the society of the 80s, that was a good thing for business. When they did it in the mid to late 90s, it was a great thing for business. They were hip. They were cool. They were with it. They were trendy. 
They help set pop culture. Now, today's WWE just kind of gets lost in the schmaz because it matches the entertainment reality. Instead of being something different that it needs to be, it's just like everything else. Frankly, I look at the roster, too, and I say there's a lack of talent in today's WWE and the wrestling business as a whole. I mean, think about that. The guy that makes the most money in the wrestling business is John Cena. How pathetic is that? How much of a sad indictment on the wrestling business is that? That the highest paid guy is John Cena. He's the tops. That is terrible. And then when you look at the other guys, the bench strength of the modern WWE and the wrestling business, I think back to the 80s. And if I didn't want to watch the WWF, I still would have had Ric Flair, the Four Horsemen, Dusty Woe with the American Dream. I would have had great tag teams like the Road Warriors, for Christ's sakes. I would have had the Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express. Do I need to go on in the 90s, in the Monday Night Wars, in the Attitude Era time frame? If I didn't like what the WWE was selling me, I would sit there and go over to WCW, and here's the fucking NWO. Here's Sting. Here's Goldberg. Here's DDP. Here's interesting, compelling characters. And I would go to ECW, and there's Taz, and there's Sabu, and there's freaking the Dudley Boys. Again, interesting, compelling characters. I go somewhere else now if I don't like WWE. I'm what? I'm going to tune it in to fucking our awaits to watch Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong. Fuck you. I'm going to watch TNA and Ethan Carter the is just going to grab me by the goat sack? <clears throat> I don't think so. It's a lack of talent in the business as a whole. And in particular, it's reflected in the WWE. Too many nerds like me that wanted to be like them. And this is the goddamn result that we get. There's a lack of competition in the industry to drive the WWE, to motivate the WWE to do better, and ultimately to be ripped off by the WWE. Some of the best things the WWE has ever done has come at the result of them ripping off other people. You know, in the 80s, Vince took most everybody that was a character somewhere else and just brought that character to him. He took Dusty Stark and made WrestleMania out of it. Vince took some of what ECW was doing, ripped it off, and called it the Attitude Era. Vince is at his best when he steals something and makes it his own and makes it better, makes it for him. He doesn't have that anymore. Now he's forced to come up with his own creative crap. And we see the results, and they're not good. When you combine that with a lack of talent in the roster, and yeah, I'm going to say it, these guys suck. The talent roster is not good, and it's not just living in the past. It is the modern reality. These guys fucking blow chunks. Then when you look at the lack of competition to drive the WWE to get better, the lack of of other companies for the WWE to rip talent off from, to improve the bench strength overall of the business, to rip off ideas from, and the WWE creating this isolationist bullshit wrestling sports entertainment bubble where everybody likes to live in this delusion that things are better than ever, that there's no problems, there's nothing wrong here, and all we get as a result is just to focus on filling time and not maximizing it. And it's that simple. Why sit there and worry about creating unique, compelling, interesting characters? Who cares? we got to write for three hours of Raw. Who's got time for that shit? I just got to fill 12 segments of time. That's the whole philosophy now with the WWE. It's not about creating interesting, compelling characters. It's not creating unique storylines. It's about filling time. You've got all this space, all this time, all this content you have to provide. you got to fill it somehow. Who cares how you do it? These people will be stupid enough to buy into just enough. We'll throw them a freaking bone here and there, and they'll keep coming back for more to a certain degree. And we could still turn at least some type of profit. It's the WWE business model today. And what ends up happening is these characters as a byproduct end up representing the corporation that WWE has become. To those people that sit there and tell you in your lives that work ethic and determination and drive matter, they're full of shit especially in the corporate world. That shit don't matter two hella beans no matter what anybody fucking says. You could work five times as hard as somebody else, but if this asshole that doesn't do their job makes it seem like they do their job and do their job better than anybody else and make sure the most important people that know uh, know about it and they've positioned themselves better politically, watch them move up the ladder three times quicker than you. The most secure people in a corporate environment are the ones that can blend in, they can fit in, they don't rock the boat. They just feel like everybody else. They get lost in the schmas and they get overlooked. It's the key to corporate survival.
Well, in the WWE, now these characters are just like this. Nobody stands out. Nobody's unique. Nobody does anything differently. Everybody's ultimately the same. They're all about the same thing, which is ultimately about absolutely nothing. If you ever wonder what a corporation would look like in the wrestling ring, you look at the WWE now. You look at this asshole and say, why is he at the top? You look at this asshole and you wonder why he's still got a job. You look at this asshole and you say, why hasn't he been promoted multiple times over? He's three times better than this job who's getting paid at his job than this guy who's getting paid twice as much to do an inferior job. These characters are just bad. I mean, even if he didn't just knee-jerk and have Reigns win the title on Raw, why in the fuck would anybody really care if he wanted to WrestleMania, to be honest? If Cena comes back, who cares? Other than the fact of, well, if somebody comes back, it's ultimately going to go back to the same shit. And people suggest it's going to be any different. You know when Cena's around, it's going to be the same shit. Stop being stupid. Orton's boring as bricks. So is fucking Sheamus. And some of these other guys, like Owens and Ziggler and Bray Wyatt, you know, and even Dean Ambrose, you look at him. He sits there and wears jeans to the ring and a freaking, uh, whatever the fuck you want to call it, a tank top. And he's got a comb forward that my freaking Uncle Hubert would have been proud of. He'd have been like, now that's how you do a comb forward. You grow that hair as long as you can. It looks like shit. And for those of you that want to talk about hairlines, look at this, motherfuckers. When you get to be almost 35, wish you had this hairline. Pray you have this hairline. Fuck you. I just don't see how anybody could get behind or like any of these WWE characters today. They're boring as piss. They all feel the same. They all act the same. They kind of all talk the same. They all work the same. Nobody stands out. Nobody's unique. And just look at them. I mean, look at them. Think about your wrestling past. And think about your current wrestling reality. You've gone from cheering people like Hulk Hogan, the Macho Man, the Ultimate Warrior, Jake the Snake, Mr. Perfect, the NWO, Sting, Goldberg, Ric Flair, the Four Horsemen, Dusty Rhodes, the fucking Road Warriors, the Hart Foundation, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Mr. McMahon, Undertaker, Mankind, Kane, do you get see me? And Cockfist. Wow, we're getting fisted already. Straight up the ass by the WWE. These characters fucking blow.